Ah. Hi, good morning. Yes, um, thank, uh, thanks to the organization, it's possible to talk about something we, we are all somehow connected to. We all talk about stickers. Stickers are in our culture. And um, usually, as a privacy officer, I'm, I'm talking only about funny things, like, you know, you've read about Article 6 GDPR and so on, and we laugh. And we laugh and laugh. And so today, it's about serious things. And um, yes, it's a little bit out about terminology, because what is a sticker? How do we classify stickers? And um, a little bit of where did, it, where did they come from? And where are we now? And um, so we, we are talking about some of the topics here. Start. <laughs> Terminology. And what it says is a sticker is a type of label. So we already have two different definitions. A piece of printed paper, plastic, vinyl, other material, with pressure-sensitive adhesive, adhesive on one side. Decoration, functional purposes, depending on the situation. And they can come in many different shapes and sizes, and, wi and very widely in color and design. They are often adhered to items such as lunch boxes, papers, lockers, notebooks, walls, cars, windows, and so on. And in the usual form, stickers are especially popular with children and other like-minded people, I might say. <laughs> Let's start at the beginning. <clears throat> I tried to find out a little bit when stickers were invented or came from, and I found a lot of various sources telling us different things. At least one uh, should be fixed that it's already in the Egyptian era, on marketplaces, you had sort of stickers on the wall, which were um, showing the prices of the goods that are sold there. So, not writings, but stickers on the wall there. And the closest connection to the UK is like 180 years from now. Uh, Sir Roland Hill, you may know more of him than I do. He invented adhesive paper, and in the follow-up, he invented stamps. And so indirectly, he founded thousands of societies around the world collecting stamps and stickers, which is something uh, really cool. But I do think that there are different lines of ancestry. If you're looking at museums and if you're looking at um, libraries, you will see that stickers are, were already present in the 18th century and sometimes also in the 17th century. They were a little bit different because they were made of paper, they had a different glue on the backside. But all in all, if we uh, get back to the definition what the stickers are, they are a couple of hundred years old. Oops, that's the wrong direction. <laughs> so, um, I'm coming from Austria, and so uh, the, the German-Austrian or German-speaking community is a little bit closer to me. And I had a look there, and maybe you can compare it to what happened here. And um, one thing is, in Austria we had a monarchy, you still have one, as we learned this weekend. Um, and uh, the Austrian monarchy was, was very well known for being quiet, comfort, don't make any waves. So there is a tradition of sticker, to, to put stickers like nearly everywhere. Then we had, uh, you know, another prejudice, German ruthless efficiency. It's a lot about documentation. The first stickers in the first couple of hundred years were all about documentation, classification, and archives. And of course, the Swiss love for order, because it has always been done like that, and it will always be done like that. And again, we could have a talk afterwards about uh, parallel movements here in the country. There is uh, one specimen, maybe you can read it. It says, property of the people. And these were stickers from the GDR. And what I found very, very interesting about it is, it says property of the people, and then it has an inventory number. And you can see that the field where you can put in a number isn't very long. So what could we, 
what, what, what could be followed from that? Either there's, there were not so many things to be inventorized, or they had a very clever system. But uh, basically they landed on all things you could see anywhere. So, at the beginning we also said there are different names for the same thing. So in, in, in German you have the, the saying, was uns trennt ist die gemeinsame Sprache. What separates us is the common language. And I found a couple of expressions for the same thing, like sticker, label, badge, tag, decal. Um, maybe we could have a, a brief rise of hands. Who, who would call it a sticker? Okay, that seems to be the majority. Label. Okay, we could label things. Yeah, Badge. Or is badge something completely different? And it's due to my poor knowledge of the English language. Nobody. Okay, so it's my fault. Tag. Oh, great. So there are majorities, and even here are minorities to, uh, to do that. So, let's get a little bit more into scientific ways. Two things define it. On the one hand, you have something which is shown, and on the other hand, you have something that is glued. And you know that there are a couple of different possibilities to do that, and good paper and good glue is very rare. Very, very often you have a, a good paper but a miserable glue, so you have to take other things. Or you have very thin paper and super glue. These are, these are tricky. These are really tricky. And of course there are special ones with metal foil and parcel glue only. We, we will discuss later on whether post-its are stickers or not. There are different churches of opinions and maybe we find a way today. And yes, that's one example. If you see in the down left hand, uh, it's poor paper and good glue. Yes, that's uh, something um, you, you should, between touching a touch screen and eating, you should wash your hands. Because otherwise, you get something like that. It is. <laughs> Don't have to translate that one. Coming back to the continent, there's more um, to the German-speaking community. The Austrian way is, for instance, we, we have a tendency to diminish everything, it, to make it smaller, so it doesn't seem so important. And most of the people don't say sticker, but they say pickle. And pickle has an L at the end, and it says it's something small and tiny and not so important. So I brought, uh, and, and we have pickle everywhere. And I brought an example from cars. And it's always the same name, but it means different things. So the first one, pickle, is if you go on the highway, you have to pay a, a yearly toll. And so you have a pickle, a sticker, on the windscreen. And the funny thing is, even the Austrian government managed to do something like an electronic toll, but they still call it, call it an elektronisches pickle. It's not on your car, but it's somewhere on the plate. Then you have a pickle, which is the proof of the technical inspection. Then you have a pickle, which is uh, used to park your car. So your windscreen fills up with lots of different tickers. And we had one thing, which may be remembered by some people. It was like 50 years ago. We had a so-called oil crisis, maybe some Thing is happening like that today and in Austria we had a rule that you had to have a pickle on your car with a weekday like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and so on and this was the day where you were not allowed to move your car it, it should stay put and so this was one of the things Austria did against oil crisis everybody has to stay one day put maybe it works we don't know and then of course the pickle at the end of the car this I think I have to translate because it says sticker and then underneath it says uh, does, mm, can be removed badly. <laughs> That's also a very Austrian thing. 
Yes. Germany. In, in Germany, you always have somebody like Siemens or SAP who is working as a general constructor, made in Germany. It was a British invention, you know that. And they have a politically very active scene. If you are, for instance, in Hamburg, sometimes you may see a lot of those for football and for soccer and whatever. Switzerland is always slightly different. Their sticker production is mostly on neutral paper and it's home of the strategical sticker reserve and this is a, this is true there is there is a there's a group of people in switzerland who are collecting masses of stickers and uh, they are very fun to talk to <laughs> really and y you may know that their motto it's one for all all for one but handled differently from city to city and canton to canton and you may know that one it, it landed up on many people's laptop. To be a little bit more uh, on the economical aspects, <clears throat> I, I don't know why Wikipedia says that there are stickers with political motives. They are often sold on punk concerts. I mean, I've been to quite a lot. I've never, never seen anything of that. Um, but there are a lot of non-commercial sticker exchanges. Uh, also here on EMF, we come to that. <clears throat> but what's uh, also interesting is that stickers are sold for massive prices. This is uh, from, a, from a German, uh, from a German trade, trading platform, but you will find it on eBay too. And you have not only sticker collections, but st single stickers selling for more than 100 euros. And so I came up with an expression named Panini Psychology. And to be honest, it's not, uh, it's not my idea. But uh, maybe you know Scott Galloway. He's a professor in the United States and he does a lot of talks. And he is, um, let's say, one of his basic principles, why things have value or why people add value to them, is scarcity. So why do we want things, especially rare ones? And uh, why is collecting stamps, which are stickers, an art, a art? And from uh, Scott Galloway, he's, uh, mm, he likes NFTs more than I do, <laughs> definitely. Uh, I, I derived two questions, because, uh, you know, with NFTs, it's, uh, it, it's really funny. A lot of people talk about them, and there are very seldom people who really understand how they are stored or what you could do. But currently, at least on the continent, there are a lot of art movements using NFTs to raise funds. So it's not completely bad, but at the end of the day, from a technical point of view, I think there's no use. <laughs> and of course, there are stickers on laptops. And um, these are examples from, from the camp here now. So what could we do? We could classify those people who are collecting or hunting. And I took a couple of, let's say, psychological aspects. One, he wants to have one specimen and one copy of every sticker he can lay hand on. That the good question is how do you document and how do you archive them? Some of them like that, but space is limited on the back of a laptop. Yes, and uh, sticks the coolest one on his laptop or on his kids, neighbors, friends. There are those people who always take two stickers. You can see that at the sticker exchanges where the carton boxes are. It, they always take two specimens, one for myself and one to bring for someone. I, I like that idea. And yes, the other one, uh, we already ha we had one of those at the uh, Chaos event in Vienna. There was somebody who was really looking quite long at the sticker box, and the next time I went there, the complete sticker box was gone. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, then there are those who uh, really collect things and organize them. And there are a couple of people in, in Berlin, Vienna, and in Switzerland who do that. And it's, it's really funny to talk to them about how they are organizing stuff. And yes. And the problem, what I see, is they don't stick their stickers to anything. They, they just collect it. There's a completely different mindset. 
and of course some of uh, the other some of the audience may know that if you uh, if you meet someone and he shows you one sticker after the other and so after 30 minutes you want to go away but you're <laughs> polite and yes I have one more to show you this is uh, the equivalent of the slide presentations we had yes also more stickers so at uh, the beginning why, why did it why did uh, we start with stickers anyway and uh, at uh, Chaos, uh, Chaos Computer Club events at the Congress, the last Congress, who was held physically, it really got out of hand. Because, you know, the Congress is a big thing, it's like lots of people and you've got sticker boxes everywhere. And so people try to centralize one sticker exchange. Centralizing is maybe not the best idea, because there was a queue of people there was even a sign made, end of the queue, and you had to hold that, if you were the last in the queue, and you had to wait between one and two hours to get to the sticker box to exchange stickers. So it was a funny thing to look at, but it was psychologically really interesting because that queue didn't stop during night between uh, 1 a.m. and 8 a.m. It was three days. And I was sitting there at the info desk, and I thought, what? 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 Okay, so stickers have to be important to us. And uh, there are two people which, uh, m which tried to, to ease that, and uh, when they were ready with their ideas, then there was no physical congress. And they even founded a sticker operation center. You know, at Chaos, everything ends at OC, like operating center. And so we also already have a sticker operating center and then a remote sticker operating center. And what they did was, so, okay, we can't have a Congress. Uh, send us self-addressed envelopes with enough stamps and uh, everybody who wants to donate stickers can do so and then we redistribute it. Um, spoiler, also this went out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> Ne nearly 1,000 envelopes, <laughs> and uh, it was—it's—it's it's difficult in Germany because you, if you buy stamps, they're only valid for 14 days or something like that, and so it was—it was really hard for those people, and they—they they promised never to do it again. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Yes, there's a there's a there's a story on it, and uh, yes, maybe usually it should like should look like that, but after 10 seconds, you know, popular. That's the wrong. That's wrong. So, that's the progress usually in very few minutes. Yeah, or the other way around, yes. But the problem being that if you have a lot of people standing around, something will always slip. <laughs> Difficult. But uh, new ideas for organization of sticker exchanges are always welcome. So please try your own ideas. Okay, how much time have we left? Um, collection and documentation. One, one interesting question is, why do we want to own or possess a thing which is physical? Do we really need it physically? Or would it be sufficient if you just make a picture of it and collect that somewhere on your NAS or wherever? And there's been written a book to that topic, and it's called The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction. I don't know why Walter Benjamin wrote it like 80 years ago, but there are a lot of aspects in there which are useful for sticker collectors. Does anybody know the book? Okay, maybe you understand why I say this. <laughs> so, uh, it's a lot about uh, originals and loss-free reproduction, but it's also a very political book. Yes, NFTs, not funny. Scan and archive on microfish. I've seen that, I've, I've seen uh, things being printed out and then archived on microfish. It's an interesting idea, but insurances do that. So, how could we do it? If you're like the, the Swiss uh, stickers exchange or Mano and Shiro in, in Berlin, uh, how could you really collect things and sort them? And I think event-based is something which I really like. Uh, there are a couple of people who 
sort them by events, they are sorting them chronologically, and there's even a discussion going on which of those transparent envelope sheet protectors would be the best. Really, there's a discussion. And yes, now we're coming to the big question. Are post-its stickers? The problem is, on the one hand, they would be something like a one-time pad or one-time sticker. And there are even artsy stickers which are really especially planned to be only a one-off. And but post-its, I don't know. They are not completely glued at the backside. I'm, I'm still in favoring it because just to, to add to the quantity of stickers. <laughs> and the funny thing is, uh, you know, as, as we've been talking before, stickers were in, stamps were more or less invented in the UK. Stamps can be very expensive nowadays and it's only 180 years. So maybe we, in another 180 years we will see auctions for stickers from this event here. Maybe we won't, so we, we won't see it, somebody else will see it. <laughs> okay, so um, what I've seen lately are these, these art stickers and, and I like them. And if you, if you see them somewhere, just collect them via your phone and don't pull them off the wall. And the next thing was that we are talking about, you know, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of European funding if you have more than two countries. And we were talking about an open sticker foundation. And we would bring all the keywords where you normally could raise your funds, like uh, the new stickers are the new oil, a sharing economy, startup, blockchain, artificial intelligence. <laughs> I'm sure we could collect some money. Be sure there's also a sticker for you out there. Here at the EMF, there are two sticker boxes. One is at the Scottish Consulate and one is at the Dome. And a couple of stickers I also have with me. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Um, we've got, we're a few minutes ahead of schedule. If anyone's got a couple of questions, we've got time for a question or two. Anyone? Anyone? I've got one then. Oh, okay. My question quickly. What's your favourite sticker of all stickers? Lucy, can I'm, you I'm sorry, catch up to Judy? Sorry? The most, the most favourite of my stickers? Oh, that's a difficult question. Oh, was that your same question? No. Oh. Oh, sorry. The, 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 oh, the sorry. The, sorry, the question was, what's your favorite the, the, sticker? Uh, the problem sorry. is I can't oh. understand you because you're... I was asking, what's your favorite sticker of all stickers? Yeah. Um, sorry. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, there's, there's, there's one I like which says, uh, Ken S for Nazis. I like that one very much, but... So, my I'm, sit, I'm, I'm standing somewhere where I can't. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. My Take that. Is, is there a theme over the most popular stickers? A do theme? They have animals, do they ah, have okay. Is there, is there a theme of the most popular stickers, like humans, animals, anything like that? Um, I think stickers which only have a logo on them are not so popular because they're just for you know marketing reasons or stuff like that. Stickers with a, a, a little message, which is a, a slightly twisted message, are quite okay. Like, every corpse on Mount Everest was once a very motivated person. This was, this was one of my favorite stickers here. Okay, great. Um. <laughs>